Net neutrality sucks, doesn't it? I mean, think about it. Why should we have to share our internet with everyone else? The internet is basically a set of pipes that instead of delivering water or gas, deliver information. So why shouldn't we be able to pay for faster information? It's one of those things that seems like a good idea on the surface, but the deeper you dig, the more stupid it sounds. And the crazy part is, a lot of providers try to sell it as a benefit as opposed to as a limitation. There are two main issues surrounding net neutrality, which is data usage and data speed. For example, Free recently announced Go Binge, a service that lets you watch as much of certain services as you want without using your data allowance at all. Just think of that for a second. As long as you're a free customer and you have more than four gigabytes of data a month, or you pay for the premium plan, you can watch all the Netflix you want, which is great for Netflix, but isn't great for anyone else. Think of it this way. If Snappy Tech suddenly became its own hosting service, right? When we had servers which hosted our own videos and all of the stuff you had to get off of Snappy Tech as opposed to off of YouTube, we would suffer majorly. No one would come to the Snappy Tech website to watch Snappy Tech videos because why would you? That eats into your data allowance and your data allowance is for more important things. And instead you'd go to Netflix and watch that or go to YouTube and watch that. It, it stifles competition. And the issue isn't just prioritizing the source, it's also limiting the source entirely. In fact, imagine if we lived in a world where Free had the ability to go, oh yeah, George, uh, you, you don't pay us anything, so anyone connecting to you gets a slow connection, and what ends up happening is you get a load of buffering, or, you know, the video is always very low resolution, because the speed just isn't high enough. And though a lot of major companies wouldn't have to be concerned because, you know, they, they can afford to pay for their super fast connection, what about when they're no longer major? What about when they're competing? The reason I'm making this video today is because there's a massive protest going on making sure to try and maintain rules that protect net neutrality. There is said to be about 80,000 websites and services working to limit their service just for today. If you've been using the internet, you've probably noticed it. There are some major players taking part, the likes of Google, Facebook, Amazon, Reddit, Netflix, Twitter, Snapchat. All of these services are saying, no, we want neutrality. This can even go as far as internet service providers charging for access to websites. Imagine if, I don't know, AT&T were able to go, oh, you, you want to use Netflix? Nah, that's, that's not part of our package. You can, you can pay 40 pounds a month extra though. If you wanna do something about it, which I highly recommend you do because it benefits no one apart from the few ISPs who control your access to the internet. There's a link in the description. I highly suggest you click it. There's a petition. There's also like a little form you have to fill out. There are a few different things you can do. They'll be, they'll be linked in the description. Highly recommend you do it. Net neutrality is highly critical. And we're living in a world where we're more and more engulfed with technology. And people are discussing whether or not the internet should be a human right. And if it was, then surely net neutrality should be part of that, right? No one should be able to say, oh, you can't use this website because it's not profitable for us. With roughly half of the internet traffic in the world being some form of Google site or service, things like Gmail or Google search or Google Calendar, imagine if that got shut down. Imagine if one day an ISP turned around and said, oh yeah, we're, Google takes up way too much of our bandwidth. So if you want Google, we're gonna have to charge extra for that. So if you're using Netflix today and it feels a bit slower than usual because it is being throttled, then think about how lucky you are that you have an open internet, the fact that you can use anything you want and have and expect the same level of usage. So support net neutrality, that's, that's, it's really that simple. However, don't trust all the companies that claim they're backing net neutrality such as, and I mentioned AT&T earlier specifically because of this, AT&T. The interesting thing is they released a statement claiming they were backing net neutrality and that they, they thought that everyone should have, you know, equal access to the internet, but they already have things that are pretty anti-net neutrality, throttling other services and, you know, standard stuff.
If you have friends who don't know about net neutrality, share this video with them right now. It's crucial that we not only get people to sign against net neutrality, but people know what it is. And as I'm in the UK, I'm not affected by the FCC's ruling. However, it does set a precedent, and it's not the kind of precedent I want to be set. A good way to think about it is to set power in such a way that if people you don't like have it, it's still not the end of the world, right? Regardless of how much you trust your ISP with non-net neutrality in place, there are other ISPs that you might not like or might not trust, but they have that same power. Just because you're giving it to one of them doesn't mean you're not giving it to the others. So Jit Pai, if you're watching this for whatever reason, um, hi, I guess, but listen, the job of the government is to represent the people and the people have spoken. We like net neutrality, and as much as that is great for a few ISPs and for people who make millions off the back of it, or maybe even billions if they're lucky, it's not what the people want. And it's irresponsible for you to take away net neutrality because it is a fundamental right.